Hi, and welcome back to a quick video. So I was editing the part one video yesterday, and uh, I sort of got thinking about I sort of got thinking about the minus forty, and obviously it's the fact that the exterior temperature sensor isn't plugged in. And I started thinking about the air conditioning, and a lot of cars the air conditioning won't work if the exterior temperature is below maybe two or three degrees Celsius. So I wondered whether um, I can find out where the temperature sensor is. I think it's just underneath the grill and um, see if it's plugged in and see if I can get the air conditioning working. So uh, let's go and have a look. So that is the temperature sensor which is obviously not plugged in. So I just need to find the wiring for it. Uh, fog lamp. It's obviously the headlamp. I wonder if it's any of these over here. Seems to be intact. Okay, let's give that a go. Right, so let's put this in. I've heard it can take a while for the temperature sensors to uh, calibrate, but that seems to be working fine. Need to charge the battery as well. Right. Now it's 15 degrees outside, so I'm not sure I'm going to really know if it's working, but might need to wait till it gets a bit warmer outside. Um, can't hear the compressor coming in or out. Nothing at the moment. Okay, well, when it warms up later, I'll test it again. I'm just going to try some of this leather cleaner that I've had for years. Just on one section. That door certainly looks better when you compare it to how it looked before. Still some work needed. I think some of the plastics are quite worn. Um, you see I've only done a couple of areas of the seat, but um, I think it'll probably come up alright. Needs a new mat as well. That's well worn. Oh, so, insurance company were kind enough, or the assessors were kind enough to bag up all the bolts and stuff for headlamps. We've got eight or nine bolts there. So, I just want to see how well this headlamp fits in. Bolts are the same. Just going to stick them in temporarily. So 
sorry about the background noise. It's drilling and house alarm and all sorts going off. So I've just got it back together, mucked it up. <clears throat> and uh, this side's pretty good. I haven't put a spot and bracket on the headlamp, but it's pretty solid. Um, but uh, it's pretty clear that the bonnet's not saving it. It's pushed back quite a lot there. And uh, that, that headlamp's just, there's no brackets left. Um, and yeah, the bumpers, the bumpers have it. So it's going to need bonnet, uh, left headlamp, bumper, and also the uh, front panel, because the uh, mountings for this headlamp have snapped off the front panel. Um, I have just taken it down the private road and a um, little bit of a worry at first because uh, it's sounding a little bit rough and blowing out that smoke but that seems to have stopped now so uh, a bit of charge and um, start getting some parts on order. Right, I thought I'd get out of the uh, noise of neighbours drilling and house alarms and uh, just pop into the shops. So yeah, so basically tried to get the air conditioning working, um, doing plugging in the exterior temperature sensor hasn't worked. So I'm guessing that it's the condenser or something, uh, probably hasn't worked for a while I'm guessing. And obviously I've put the headlamps and the bumper on uh, temporarily, uh, it's obvious that bonnets need to be replaced as well. It's not savable, or not, not by me anyway. Uh, I'm going to try and get both the bonnet and the bumpers in Le Mans Blue, but trying to get a pre-LCI Le Mans Blue bonnet and bumper for the uh, B92 is quite difficult, but so it seems. Um, when the E92s came out, they were SE models only, so the pre-LCI models were only around for about a year or so. So um, I'll keep a lookout for those, but um, I think I can probably get the parts now. I've uh, taken it for a little drive up the road. Uh, there was quite a lot of smoke on overrun, like a, like a whitish smoke, but that seems to have cleared. There was also a strange noise that came with it, uh, a bit like a, an exhaust noise, but um, I'm not really sure what it was, but it sort of went away again. Um, and uh, yeah, there also seemed to be, also didn't seem to be as quick as I would have expected from previous uh, 320Ds I've driven. And um, I'm going to try and plug in the MAF sensor just to see whether maybe the MAF sensor's gone. If you unplug them, they sort of run in a default mode. Um, obviously, I'll plug it in and see if there's anything else going on. But um, it just just didn't seem to it was boosting it was definitely boosting but it just didn't seem to have the sort of power that you'd expect so um yeah that need investigating but uh, at least the smoke stopped so i was a bit worried maybe there was turbo seals or or some other issue um maybe maybe it's still the dpf maybe there's a blockage there Maybe once it's driven a bit more, it will become a bit more apparent with uh, error messages or something. Um, but I want to try and get it sort of straight enough before its next MOT so I can just sort of uh, give it a shakedown and see if there's anything else needed. Well, thanks guys for watching a slightly cobbled together part two. I uh, wasn't really planning on doing one so soon, but... Um, there was a few bits I wanted to do and I had the time. So, um, yeah, hopefully hopefully have some parts of, around next week for part three and uh, start getting the car back together properly. But for now, I uh, hope you enjoyed it and um, please subscribe and share if, if you like the video and uh, especially if you want to see how the, uh, the 320D gets on. But for now, I'm just going to have a well-earned cup of tea. Cheers.